start uh, next question in the middle with Peter Heckman. No, Peter Heckman, Randy. Oh, Randy Heckman. <laughs> Wrong Peter. Randy Heckman. Try this one together. <laughs> Randy. Uh, Questioner says, I'm on Social Security. Why do you think my quite meager benefits from Social Security should be cut when the very rich should not pay higher income taxes? Want to repeat that? Yep. <laughs> I'm on Social Security. Why do you think my quite meager benefits from Social Security should be cut when the very rich should not pay higher income taxes? Well, see, I don't know that those are necessarily connected to each other, and I don't know of anybody who's talking about cutting Social Security benefits. All right, they're not talking about, in fact, they're going to be going up with the cost of living, I'm led to believe, uh, this next year. But what we are talking about, since we're on the subject of Social Security, um, we need to talk about how we're going to make this thing work into the future, because it is not on a path that is, is sustainable, and it needs to be changed. Um, and uh, Paul Ryan, a state uh, or a congressman from Wisconsin, has come up with a plan, and it's better than nothing. It's a good start to get solvency for Medicare and for Social Security. I believe we have to raise the age for uh, Social Security and Medicare. It's got to go up. It was created back in an age when people died earlier. We live longer. It doesn't work. The mathematics, this is not a personal thing, it's math. But I do think that uh, there's systems that are in place in other parts of the world. Uh, uh, Kane, before he dropped out, talked about the, the program in Chile. Uh, there's also been a program for, uh, for state workers or county workers in Galveston, Texas that allows people to give to a private program. I believe that anyone who's born after 1970 should be able to make an option to be able to put their money into a plan such as that and they can actually keep it and get it to come back and pay better dividends than our current system does. Um, so that at least answers the first part of that, and I'm going to defer to my brother in here to answer the second part. Thank you. <laughs> Peter Pinecki, I'm on Social Security. Why do you think my quite meager benefits from Social Security should be cut when the very rich should not pay higher income taxes? Um, I would never support cutting Social Security. It seems that um, everyone in this room is paying Social Security taxes. If you don't pay Social Security taxes, you go to jail. Uh, there's no question about it. In return for that, the government says that you are going to receive some sort of benefit. So I would never cut Social Security. Government has gone its obligation. But that being said, I think that government has demonstrated a complete incompetence in managing Social Security and Medicare systems. They physically looted the trust funds, um, and they have no concept whatsoever as to how to run it. So the only solution to Social Security and Medicare is to transition those to the private sector. And as Randy mentioned earlier, um, we have two very, very good models. There's the Galveston, Texas model, where uh, in, in the 1980s, Social Security was in dire straits right after the Clinton administration. And Social Security allowed these uh, municipalities to opt out. They had a totally private system. They had three criteria. They had to be, um, no more money taken out of the pay than it was taken out of the Social Security. It had to be risk-free and it had to better benefits. So um, Galveston worked with a, an organization, a group of bankers, you know, the bad green bankers, but they set up a private account. So the money that came out of each person's uh, wages went into their own bank account, their own retirement account. They found that after 30 years, oh, they, were, they were invested in risk-free annuities, so there was no uh, fluctuations in the stock market. They found out that after 30 years, the benefits increased from um, either 50% of what social, 50% higher than what Social Security would return to 300% higher than what uh, Social Security would return. So it was totally private. We need to go through and transition our Social Security system to something like that. It also was incorporated in the country of Chile on a countrywide basis, and it worked out phenomenal. So we have to get government out of Social Security to construct. Thank you. Question again, Chuck Marino, I'm on Social Security. Why do you think my quite meager benefits from Social Security should be cut when the very rich should not pay higher income taxes? Are there any seniors other than the one question? <laughs> <laughs> sure we do. I'm a senior. Getting close to it. The one thing that is really obvious is that this administration, along with Debbie Stabenow, doesn't intend to pay on Social Security. They're going to bankrupt. 
and I'll give you some examples of why I know this to be true. First of all, we all paid into Social Security. The liberals like to go around and call it a trust fund. Okay, we'll use their words, a trust fund. And what gives them the right to rob our trust fund? Let's do Medicare. Medicare you paid into all your life, and when you get to retire, you should be able to retire using it. But right now they're taking $530 billion out of that trust fund that they said is a trust fund for you, and they're going to give it to Obamacare. What right do they have to steal that money from you? And that's what they're doing, stealing your money. It's really easy to have class warfare between the rich, between seniors. But I'm going to tell you, even worse than that, there's a new um, bill that everybody's uh, um, debating right now, and it's the payroll tax. That's a tax, whether anybody likes it or not. And where are they going to get the money from? They're taking out Social Security. Instead of going bankrupt in year 2024, 20, it's going to go bankrupt in 2015. Uh, it's disgusting. Lyndon Johnson took Social Security and he added it to the budget when he was in power because he wanted to balance the budget. I proclaim that we take it back out of the budget and we put it on its own. And in February, I'll roll out a plan to save Social Security security, some of the things we can do and make it solvent on itself, and I'll also give a plan for people to invest, much different than anybody else's proposal. Thank you. Uh, I'm on Social Security. Why do you think my quite meager benefits from Social Security should be cut when the very rich should not pay higher income taxes? Well, if you're honest, I don't think they should be cut. One. Two, I don't think the rich really I, I mean, I do believe the very rich do pay higher taxes. I, may, I don't know if it's how it works out proportionally, but I'm sure they, they pay out more money in taxes than I do, or any of us, unless they're so super rich or just kind of <laughs> on the DL about it. Um, but as far, so as far as that goes. Now, as far as the social security system goes in general, the U.S. Constitution does not have anything in there that gives Congress the power to set up a social security system or any other type of entitlement system like that. That being said, obviously we've already got it. There's people heavily vested in it and we need to take care of both the people who are on it and those who are soon to be on it. However, the younger generation needs to have a chance to opt out and we need to transition over to a constitutional approach whereby the federal government is no longer the administrator of Social Security and move those functions out to the states and at some point in the future after you know meeting the obligations of those who are on their way to becoming um, recipients we need to then have the states decide how to manage the Social Security system if they even choose to maintain one in the long run in the future but that should not be a federal duty at all. Um, in the short run, as far as making um, things economical, some people might go, well, how can you even opt out? It's next. The numbers don't work out. Well, a lot of number crunching was done by the staff of um, one of my um, heroes, Ron Paul. And they worked out a plan whereby they could retire the Social Security system and still make sure that the people that are dependent on it and are likely to become dependent on it in the future, near future, will be taken care of. So um, I encourage everyone to look at that plan and on each of you we'll add it. Once again, I'm on Social Security. Why do you think my quite meager benefits from Social Security should be cut when the very rich should not pay higher income taxes? Well, like everybody else, I do not support cutting Social Security benefits from people who've been paying into it all their lives and trusted that in paying it in, they'd get something back. But certainly the younger citizens of this country have got to question whether or not they're going to get anything back. If you look at the financing of Social Security and you look at the Democratic administrations and it started like Lyndon Johnson and those that have come thereafter, Republican and Democrat both, robbing that trust fund to pay for other operating costs of the federal government. You can understand why young people question whether they'll ever see a dime back in benefits. In fact, I've heard it said that if you're under 40, you should just plan on having no Social Security benefits the way it is timed out to go out of existence in terms of fiscal solvency. 
So if you're on the system, we ought to make sure you get back what you thought you would get back from that social contract. <coughs> but beyond a certain age, we've got to give people the option of investing otherwise and directing their, their capital, like in Galveston or in Chile or some other system, whereby people have better control over their own accounts. If we get a chance on health care, I'll talk about medical savings accounts, which is a comparable type system in terms of the government. But when we, you know, I was six or seven years old when Lyndon Johnson started robbing the Social Security Trust Fund. That's pretty much all my life. How many of us in here believe we can trust the federal government? 20 and 30 and 40 years from now, for some, for in Hunter's case, 50 years from now, to actually pay him anything for the Social Security taxes he pays today, I don't trust them. You can trust those things you can control, and we ought to give the American people more control over their retirement system <coughs> instead of compelling them to pay into a system we know from history they'll rob and therefore we can't trust to work. <coughs>